Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and uh, it could be 250 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Welcome to the Man Spreading Championships. Uh, I am your reigning, cha- reigning defending champion, undefeated Lewis Spears, and this is how I will be sitting for the remainder of the episode to assert dominance on not only you, the viewer, but also my employees, all right? Pipe down, the two of you. Uh, uh, I'm in hell. I'm trapped. Uh, I'm in hell. Rosie's forcing me to be organized. Uh, and Keelan as well. And uh, we're sick of it. Viva la revolution. I will not pack my bags two days before we leave. <laughs> I refuse. It's in the calendar. I'm not going to do it. I will pack my bags before the Gold Coast show ten minutes before we leave or I quit. And that's it. That's final. I refuse. I'll jump out the window. If you come two days before we leave and go, have you packed your bags? You know where I'll be heading? Straight out the window from the top floor. And then who's going to take you all to Gold Coast? You'll have to drag my corpse kicking and screaming, putting my underwear in my backpack, going, no, I don't want to do it yet. I want to leave it to the last minute. Um, That, and okay, okay, well, maybe I will. You know what? I'll think about it. All right. Uh, we're being forced to be organized. I've done four videos this week. I'm sure you guys are all very entertained. I feel like, uh, like, uh, great. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's awesome. We've done two videos, four videos, right? Uh, I've been streaming. I've done this podcast. It's coming out early for Patreon supporters. Thanks for your money. What the fuck? All of, I bet all these Patreon supporters are going, oh my God, I'm actually receiving value for my input. That's crazy. <laughs> What's going on? I was used to like uh, just getting empty promises, but no, it's all changing. But one thing that will not change is when I pack. It'll be seven minutes before uh, we have to board the plane or I am not doing my show. I'm on strike, okay? Loosebeers.com, Gold Coast is coming up. That's on Thursday. And then we've got Brisbane on Friday and on Saturday. The Brisbane shows are almost sold out. They are definitely happening. A lot of people are like, oh, are these, these still happening? Yes, they're the only ones that are happening on the original date. This is supposed to be the end of my tour. And now it's the start. Please come. Uh, also, I will have a bunch of U2's figures as well. Uh, you need to buy those because they're just filling up my fucking house. Um, all right. So what if, I mean, we're, we're coming into uh, the final week of quarantine here in Tassie and uh, we get out very soon. And let me tell you who's, who's really excited about that, the police, because they are very frustrated with my behavior. You know, classic Lewis Spears, I've managed to piss off the cops within a week of arriving uh, in a new place. The police have been sending everyone in this house texts every single morning to uh, sign in with their GPS. Uh, And I float between not doing it on principle and missing the text and forgetting. And uh, that's, I think I've done it once. I think uh, Rosie's done it every time. Uh, And uh, I think uh, one time they forgot to text Rosie. She called the police station in a panic saying, please send me the text. It's late. She's, she, she packed for Gold Coast before she packed to come to Tasmania. (laughs) That's how fucking organized she is. So uh, anyway, I haven't done any of this. Keelan and Rosie have been doing it. Um, and uh, today I, I wake up to, to Rosie having a panic attack because the police are on the phone and sitting outside our house wanting me to step foot in outside the house to prove that I am not just flagrantly avoiding the quarantine. I would never break the rules like that. What I will do, however, is not what you want me to do and force you to get off your ass and check on me. I mean, why do the police want access to my phone anyway? Why why wouldn't I just leave the house and leave my phone at home and instruct Keelan to check in? Like, I feel like they should be coming in person. So really, I'm making the police do the job that they should have been doing from the start. You're welcome, Tasmania. It's my fault. I... The last time I checked in, they say, do you have anything else to say? Yeah. And I said, why don't you swing past and say, hello, we're bored. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. That's, that's really good. <laughs> they didn't seem to, to be wanting to say hello. They seem very unimpressed. Uh, Rosie's got the phone on loudspeaker. She goes, oh, they're both here. Do you want to Do you want to speak to them? And I went, hello, I'm still in my house. Keelan's going, I'm in bed. And then they go, no, we want to see you at the window. She goes, oh, and the boys as well? They're like, absolutely. So I come all the way down the stairs. By the way, the steepest stairs I've ever seen in my life. Can we turn that off? I'm hot. Um, The steepest stairs that I've ever seen in my fucking life, right? They're ridiculous. I've got size 13 shoes. I mean, look at them. They're massive. 
They barely fit in the frame of this fucking podcast. And I have to step down these tiny steps that look like they were built for... Who are those... Uh, it, was it, is it Japanese chicks that have to fold their feet in half to impress the, the emperor? Or is that Chinese chicks? Can't remember. What's the... No, never mind. Um, <laughs> we're back. Chinese. Uh, Chinese, that's right. I, I read it. Uh, you know, I, that reminds me, I read a book about, uh, it's a really, I can't remember the name of the book. It was a really, really great book about like four generations of Chinese women. And it, and it was written by one of them. And it just like, it just basically just took down the all of the crazy significant events that happened that while China was also going through this tr- crazy transformation of like, you know, a, a borderline feudal and ruled by emperors to like having an actual political system and a leader. And it started off and it was like just horrific for women. You know, the, the great grandmother's getting her feet folded in half and it was just normal and, and her mother was doing it to her child so that she could live a better life than she did and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and, I, and I made it through that and then I made it through the next generation of Chinese women and it was like pretty much just as bad, you know, except Chinese dudes were like, oh, what? We allowed you to leave the house. What are you complaining about now? Uh, and then I'm not going to lie, when it got to like modern China, when it was just like a, a woman waking up and then going to work and then being like, gee, I can do whatever I want. I stopped reading it. It was boring, you know? Um, so anyway, these stairs are really small. And uh, I reckon, I think that I'm feeling, let, we should take bets, you know, write in the comments below. What, how many weeks in do you think uh, we'll get before I break my neck falling down the stairs? Because I don't know if you guys saw that video that I posted on Twitter, but I can get on the way down my heel on each step and that's it. And on the way up my toes and that's it. They don't fit. And also it's so narrow like width wise that I can't go down sideways. Everyone was going, oh, go down sideways. If I do that, my knee smashes into the wall and then so does my ass. So I have to take the stairs in, a, in a, a, the most precarious way possible. And I've started doing it in socks. So I think that I have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, death wish really. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do it in socks, you know? So if you try and make me pack my bags two days before I leave, I might soap up the stairs. I'm not, it's not promised, but it might happen, you know? Seven minutes after the plane leaves or I'm quitting stand-up. Um, anyway, so I go down the stairs to wave at the cops and uh, they are just so fucking unimpressed with us, you know? Keelan comes down and gives them a little wave. I go and go, hello! And they didn't find that funny at all. They looked like they wanted to come in and put me in a headlock, Right? But that's just how good the police off, off force he, is here in Tasmania, the real Australia. Not like these bloody mainlanders. They're running around like headless chickens. They don't know what to do. All right. Gladys just announced 1,400 cases and then was like, oh, and by the way, here's our pathway out. Scott Morrison is meeting up with her underneath a bridge to give her secret doses of Pfizer. So you know what, you know what pisses me off? Dan Andrews just went on like a press conference and just announced... Uh, after this, after the 7.30 report just figured out that Sydney has been getting extra doses of the vaccine uh, over every other, like, Labor seat. I reckon what they're trying to do is the Liberal government has fucked up this thing so badly that they're giving extra vaccines to Sydney so that Sydney comes out of lockdown first, despite the fact that if everyone was getting their fair share of vaccines, it would probably be more like... Melbourne or Brisbane coming out of restrictions before anyone else, maybe Perth. Although Mark McGowan seems to be the type of guy where it's like, look, if anyone sneezes, that's it. I'm cancelling work. Stay in your house. We're closing the borders. You've been very naughty. Um, So I think that's what they're trying to do. I reckon they're trying to give so many vaccines to Sydney people that despite this entire second wave or third wave in Melbourne of lockdowns happening, it being entirely Scott Morrison's fault, they're going to go, oh, well, Sydney managed it and they're liberal, so it's got to be everyone else's fault. They're trying to like gaslight the rest of the country and to look like they're doing a terrible job. Uh, when really it's like, I also love how Pfizer came out. I knew Pfizer was going to come out swinging their dick at some point 
because the government has been going for a long time. Oh, we tried to get vaccines. We tried. I knew at some point Pfizer was going to come out and go, well, actually, dickheads. And they did that a couple of days ago. And they just revealed that they that Pfizer had been trying to book meetings with the health minister, Greg Hunt, at the start of all of this bullshit to sell them vaccines. And Greg was like, oh, I'm busy, bro. Busy doing what, dude? Liking fucking Twitter images of, of BBW cum dump, cum pumpers. You know that's true? On his Twitter account, he was caught liking a photo from some Twitter account that was called something like BBW cum dumpster 69. And it was like a big fat chick, like just getting fucked. Isn't that really awesome? Isn't that just truly sweet? That old Greg Hunt is out there just liking... Like in the fatties. And that, you know, maybe that's why he's a bad health minister. If he was a truly good health minister, he would be liking uh, people with healthy BMIs getting hot loads all over them. All right? That happened to um, Ted Cruz as well when he was running to be president. He was was it fat chicks too? It was stepmoms and stepdaughters. That's right. <laughs> yeah. See, that, that's, uh, that's dangerous, isn't it? You know? You don't want your dad looking at stuff with stepdaughters. That's a little bit. I don't know about that one. You know, you would hope that if you if you catch your father looking at like stepmom and stepdaughter stuff that he's picturing himself as the stepdaughter, you know? Not you. <laughs> that's dangerous. Um so that's great, but at the end of the day, man, speaking as a Tasmanian, that's all mainlander bullshit, and we don't care about that. That's all. That's you guys and your mainlander problems running around. You don't know how to run a country, so you come to us, you know, begging for help, and we're not going to give it to you. I'm going to Gold Coast to do shows, and I'm going to pack two hours after the show. And if I don't get to do that, I'm quitting. I'm in prison. Help. Uh, and that's going to be great. Um, what else has been happening? I've just been in in my house here. Messing with the cops. Oh, we, we also uh, got to yell at a ticket inspector today. That was fun. You know, the the two two people here, Keelan and Rosie, they've parked in the street and we obviously can't get parking permits. We're residents, right? We can't get parking permits yet. And we also can't move the cars at all because we can't leave the house. So after about four days, guess what happened? Someone snitched, right? We see a parking inspector walking around looking for the two cars. Keelan runs out and then goes, oh, wait, I can't. And then starts yelling at her and goes, we're from Victoria. And I said, shush, bro, we're, we're Tasmanian. We're residents, but we have been in Victoria. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and she goes, oh, I've got complaints. You know what? I reckon it was that woman who thinks that we've been violating quarantine. I think that it was her. And you know what else? She's probably going to feel, feel very vindicated when she sees the, par the parking inspector come around and then the cops come around. So I think <laughs> that someone in this street is looking in our windows and snitching, calling the cops, calling the parking inspectors. Too bad, bitch, we're here. And I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> or I'm not selling. Is that the quote? Um, <laughs> I love people just like... That's is right, that hello see i fucking speak of the devil <laughs> i'm telling you she keeps looking in our fucking window to make sure we're here oh, how good was the movie last night when we went to the cinema it was packed wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> this this podcast is is uh is shambles this episode because i haven't left the house next week's gonna be fire dude i'm gonna get a haircut uh, right now i look like uh, a mix of like a goth e-boy and a guy trying to sell you a shit knockoff of an iphone that's that's the vibe i've got the curtains going on here which i've never tried before keelan keeps telling me man i like your hair like that but this is it when it's wet when i take the hat off this is what it does it's not it's not a vibe man it's not it's not me you know what i want to look like is someone who you wouldn't want to see carrying a really long bag into a school. You know, that's more my vibe. You go, well, I hope that's golf clubs, you know? Like, fuck, I hope he plays hockey because that is a long bag. Hope it's not a long gun in there. Now, I have here a story that I wanted to talk about that I think is brilliant. Can you send me the link, Keelan? I, I, I saw this and I thought I have to speak about this. Can we just acknowledge how long I've been manspreading? This is actually aggressively comfortable for me. You know, I don't know I don't know how you guys are feeling, but I'm feeling really comfortable. I know how all of the the viewers at home are feeling, dominated. 
and that's what you get, right? So this story is great. This is a, a, a man is suing his parents because they threw out his extensive vintage pornography collection, which is really great. Where'd you send it to me? Okay, awesome. Man, how good are Apple products? Hey, didn't that just work fucking instantly? You know? Stick that in your HP. Disgruntled American divorcee son. How, how, how Daily Mail is this headline? It's so fucking Daily Mail. This is like a, a, a paragraph. I love how they do the headline, which is in massive text, and then they have dot points that is in slightly smaller but still quite large text, and then they do the article. It's like, why do it like this? Disgruntled American divorcee son 42 wins in all caps lawsuit against his parents for throwing away disturbing. Okay, Luke's called me twice. It must be an emergency. Hey, Luke, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. What's up? Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. Bye. What a great guest uh, feature from Luke Kidgel. Disgruntled American divorcee son wins lawsuit against his parents for throwing away his disturbing collection of 2,000 porn tapes, which he says is worth $25,000 after he moved out of their basement. Man, this is like Keelan if I never hired him. <laughs> don't you think? No. You don't think that has a little bit of uh, Keelan vibes? Okay, a little bit. Parents' basement... 2,000 VHS tapes, right. obsessing over them to the point where he would betray his own blood. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, okay, great, good. Uh, David working. Where's he working? 42. <laughs> Moved back into his parents' house in 2016 after a, after a divorce. He bought a stash of pornography and sex toys during the 10-month stay. I love that. And sex toys. That's great. I understand... Women having a few different sex toys. Men, what do you need? You don't like we've got we've got one mechanism, all right? You you have a flashlight, and then I don't know, maybe I'll allow for a prostate massager. But multiple toys, nah. Are they women's toys? Is he like a vintage pornography collector? So he also collects like vintage vibrators? Doesn't say, but it Probably would be like dolls. Dolls. That's awesome. Uh, his parents claimed some of it included child porn. Okay, I'm taking back the Keelan Vibes comment. Uh, that he had an addiction and that his attitude towards women was disturbing. Uh, working had asked them for his 12 boxes of porn, sex toys, tambourine and black comforter back. He had a tambourine. Oh, this is giving Luke Kidgel vibes. <laughs> Uh, when they said they'd thrown it away, he called the police. He then sued them, claiming it was worth more than $25,000 because it, that's how much he spent on it. And a judge agreed and told them to pay damages. But the amount has not yet been decided. That's awesome. Any other choice quotes here? I want. I, there were emails that were sent back and forth, right? That his mum, uh, that his father sent to him. Here we go. Here's an email. This is the best bit. It's just them talking about the porn and the parents like telling him that they've destroyed it is so good. So this is from uh, his son to his father when they're talking about the porn. So he moved out and left the porn there. And then while he was away, his parents went through it and decided to destroy it. Uh, so this is his son to his dad. There's plenty of porn on the internet if you want to watch that, dad. Try you porn or X hamster. Believe me, I know you need it with mum around. I needed it with Mary around, I assume his ex-wife. Meanwhile, for me, there are college girls out there wanting to be made into women. Oh my God, this guy's delusional. You don't have to take someone else's stuff and I would like it back along with the sex toys, my music, CDs and tambourine, my black comforter, my record player, my wedding rings and all this other shit. My biggest problem with like, like I understand that the guy had like a lot of potential child porn, but my biggest problem with his collection is the CDs. Who the fuck has CDs anymore? You know, VHS tapes, I understand. Don't give me that look, all right? This see the killer's like oh, what do you mean it gives off Keelan vibes? And I'm trashing this man for the shit that he has. And he goes, Woody, what's wrong with CDs? No, no, no. I was, I was giving you that look because I was like, what would be on a CD porn? No, he said music CDs. 
Oh, I, I wasn't listening. I was, I was reading something. Anyway. Oh, okay. Well, that's good that you're here and you're zoning out. No worries. Um, pack your bags, man. Uh, all right. I don't have... Uh, okay, so... And then, and then his, this is his dad. This is really good stuff. Um, David working. And I, and I think that this has been sent because they've watched a lot of it and they've gone, holy fuck, what is our son into? So this is like a bunch of like spaced out paragraphs. It reads like a legal legal letter and his father has addressed it and he's written David working. So they're not on good terms, right? David working, enter. It is not natural or normal for a person to have sex with his or her mother, enter. It is not natural or normal for a person to have sex with their father. Oh, no. Dad, stop watching the tapes. And it just gets worse. Enter. It is not natural or normal for a person to have sex with their brother or sister. Stop, Dad. Stop watching. Enter. It is not natural or normal for a person to have sex with their son or daughter. Stop it. Enter. It is not natural or normal to have sex with any child, related or not. Stop digging. What's gonna get what's gonna be worse than that? Enter. It is not natural or normal for a person to have sex with an animal. Okay. I didn't think it was gonna get worse than that last one. That is bad. I found DVDs depicting all of these detestable practices in your collection. Such things should not be promoted, celebrated, or glamorized. Any civilization that tolerates or promotes these acts will not survive. Uh, This is great. What is this guy, an ancient Greek scholar? Any individual that puts this garbage into his mind, whether or not he commits these acts, will also suffer. It should be no surprise to anyone that a person who watches this stuff every day will have nightmares and or strange dreams. Or, if you're Paul, exciting dreams. That's fucking crazy. All right. Okay. Here we go. This is is a banger email. In one email to his son, Paul Working argues about some of the content he found and said that it was not natural or normal. So the father has actually listed a bunch of the titles that he's seeing. So they've really gone through it. Like they've really like just read, read everything and they're marking it down. This is great. So starts off. You know, pretty easy. No motive. Midnight, 1994. Yeah, all right. Young nurses in lust. Sure, why not? Peeping Tom. Little bit creepy. Fashionistas. Honey drippers. That's all right. Uh, Country girls in heat. No problem with that at all. Who doesn't like a good country girl? This one, old grannies, young panties. I don't know about that, okay? Old grannies? I don't know about that one. What else do we have? Um... Sorry, we just booked in our COVID test and uh, I really love that the woman must have heard me yelling about father and son because she said to Keelan, oh, I can hear your dad in the background, which means she probably also heard me say, uh, you know, uh, old granny's young panties. (laughs) Where's my old granny's young panties videotape from 2002? Anyway, where were we? Uranus experiment. (laughs) Not too bad. Uh, Granny's Gone Anal, disc one. (laughs) Granny's Gone Anal, disc two. Granny's Gone Anal, disc three. Granny's Gone Anal, disc four. Granny's Gone Anal, disc five. Granny's Gone Anal, disc six. And it continues. That's really, really great. Mother-daughter exchange club, older women, younger women, eight, and obsession two. That, and that's like, uh, oh, also this screenshot of the email, they have all of the numbers listed and it goes up to 1,036. So I think the father sat down for what must have been days and just like typed this shit out. Get the cunt working in a library. He's good at his job. Um In another email, Paul, his father, said, David, I find your whole attitude towards women to be very disturbing. Women are not objects for you to masturbate with. They are people created by God just as you were and should be treated with respect and dignity. Dude, Paul is is a feminist warrior. What a fucking prince. Dude, this guy is actually awesome. Back in high school, you joined a gang that made its money by distributing pornography to underage boys. I'm sure that you remember the day when mum and I discovered this and put a stop to it. At the time, I destroyed all your pornography and reported your activities to Pinkerton High School officials and other parents. This guy must have a photographic memory because he's writing out every single detail. I also warned you that if I found pornography in my house again, I would destroy it. And then, uh, basically, he goes on to obviously destroy it. uh, And the son then sues his own parents... And they lost the fucking 
case, which is amazing. Really, really great stuff. That's fucking awesome. And I think they ended up having to pay something like 70000 Australian dollars because they also had to pay for his lawyer fees. That's really great. I love that. I just love that those things happen. What a little bright spark in our world that a father and son are like in court battling over old granny's young panties VHS tapes. That's sweet. I wanted to address some of the the dumbest fucking comments that I have ever received on a video. I did a video about uh, people taking horse dewormer and uh, I got so many angry comments from people who clearly did not even watch the video, which is just really great. So the title of the video is a question. Is Joe Rogan actually taking horse dewormer? And the answer that I give in the video is no. He's taking the human version. There's a human version of ivermectin and there's a horse version of ivermectin. Now, they're both the same drug. Let me be clear. It's the same thing, right? You can't call something ivermectin and then it be something else. Like, it's the same thing. It's just presented in different formats because it's easier for a human to take a pill and it's easier to, I don't know, paste up a horse. Uh, But... Uh, basically the point that I was making was, hey, it's not a good idea to go to the fucking vet and buy your medicine there and then uh, self-administer it. Like what these people were doing was one, right, self-prescribing the medicine, right, and two, uh, self-deciding their own dosage based off uh, converting horse amounts to human amounts. It's the dumbest shit ever. Like, yes, all these people going, oh, actually, ivermectin has won a Nobel Nobel Prize and it's been used in humans for decades. So if any human takes uh, ivermectin, are they taking horse medicine? No, all right? It's like, it's not a good idea to actively avoid doctors to the point where you could go to a doctor and go, hey, I have these symptoms, I have COVID, do you think ivermectin is a viable treatment? And they might say yes, as they did with Joe Rogan. Their doctor decided that ivermectin in conjunction with a bunch of other fucking things, mainly those monoclonal antibodies that Trump took is the shit that probably really worked, they decided that was an effective treatment. But going to a fucking, avoiding that entire process, not going to the doctor, they're actively avoiding it and then ending up at a fucking animal store to find your medicine, even if that shit works, is not something that should be encouraged at all because that's how cunts die. Like people are rocking up to hospitals overdosing on this stuff because they don't know how to self-administer themselves medicine that they decided they needed based off a fucking Facebook comment. And that was my point. Is that insane? Am I nuts? Am I wrong there? I don't know, these people going, well, it's actually being used. There's plenty of things that are used uh, by humans all the time. Morphine, great example. It's a drug that changed the world and an amazing drug. I wouldn't be figuring out how much morphine I need and administering it to myself because then I'm going to end up underground. Okay, all right. What what have you got here? Let's check out this headline. Um, This is awesome. Ivermectin causes sterilization in 85% of men, study finds. Well, at least they won't be reproducing, you know? At least all of these dumb cunts accidentally overdosing on the horse version of Ivermectin won't be having any children to put those ideas in their heads. That's awesome. How legit is this study? Researchers at three universities in Nigeria, never mind, It's over. Take it, all right? I don't want to fucking believe any of that shit. The minute I hear researchers from a university in Nigeria, no thank you. I'm taking ivermectin. I take it all back. It definitely works. That's fucking awesome. Uh, Also, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawn Mower 4.0, the best ball bag pussy hair shaver I've ever used in my life. Disregard how my face looks. I look disheveled up here. Down there, I'm looking spick and span and so can you. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, The best razor in the game. Seriously good stuff. They have also just a bunch of like great grooming items. They've got an awesome like travel nail kit where they've got a a nail clipper and a file and like little scissors and tweezers as well. Really, really good stuff. Really high quality stuff and it's very cheap and uh, and it supports the show. So uh, please support the fact that I have two rents and go to manscaped.com, get yourself something. Spears, that's the code, 20% off and free shipping. Let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, 
This is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions sent in by the listener. Send in your life advice questions or anything you want me to talk about to podcast at loosespears.com. Here we go. This one. Uh, found out that my partner is not a virgin and it bothers me. Advice? Grow up? Perhaps? Uh, Well, no, let's hear the man out. Withhold your judgment for a moment. Oops, too late. You should have put that in the subject line. Okay, so a little context. I'm currently dating a lifelong friend of mine. Okay, we started... So you busted out of the friend zone. What a champ. We started dating earlier in the year after not being in contact for a while. Turns out they had a crush on me back in school and I was too dumb to realize. Yeah, that's classic high school boy stuff. Only thing is, I have always believed in saving sex until marriage. Yeah, that's tough. This is more of more than just a religious thing. It's just something that I've felt firmly about for reasons I'm not sure of. Now, that doesn't make sense to me. If you have like a, a firm belief and you know why you think it, I feel like that's you can justify just about anything as long as it's not hurting other people. If you know why you think something and you feel something strongly about it and you can articulate that great like i know exactly why i don't drink and do drugs and i can tell people and i've thought about it a lot i know why i do it uh and it's just a thing for me i feel like i feel like maybe i I don't think yeah i don't know if that's the most mature thing to believe something and not be sure why although you know i'm sure there's plenty of things like there's there's i'm attracted to a certain type of person and i can't really tell you why i just am So, you know, maybe that is you. Um, This made finding a partner stressful uh, to me because I wasn't sure I'd be able to find someone whose beliefs aligned with mine after I left my Christian high school. Okay, so you say it's not religious, but it seems that you've grown up in a Christian high school. So maybe that's just some little nuggets of shame that are left over in your brain that you can't get rid of. Uh, Since then, I've had one relationship with a Christian girl and we have never had sex, but we did round the other bases a few times. Okay. I mean, that's, I don't, look, either don't do it at all or do it. Don't half ass. you know? Like, what is the actual difference between a blowjob and having sex? There's, I mean, you're having sex. If you're, if you're, if people are coming and you're having sex, you know, you're just not, having penetrative sex to me if, if you're if if you're naked and you got bits in your mouth you're fucking right you're just not doing some of it you know like some sex doesn't always have a blowjob same way some sex doesn't have any actual penetration sometimes it's just a blowjob you're having sex bro you're doing it already you're just stopping at this arbitrary line that you've invented for by your own admission kind of no reason um The man did tell me to reserve judgment. Um, This new relationship has been quite similar. My current partner doesn't have all the same beliefs as me, but they are somewhat asexual and has made it clear they're not interested in sex currently and are scared of getting pregnant. This works for me now as we've agreed sex after marriage would be fine. Now that's fucking dangerous if this person is asexual and you want to have sex after this imaginary point in time uh, after you get married, they're not going to be sexual. Isn't asexual like a an orientation? If they don't want to fuck ever and you don't want to fuck until here, when you cross this line and then they're not into it anyway, aren't you just going to lose your fucking mind and go, what? I waited all this time for no reason? And there's the woman again. Um, now, here's the problem. At the beginning of our relationship, my partner told me that they had sucked a couple of guys off for cash at the end of high school. Okay. All right. I couldn't really fault that since they were chasing the bag. Man, this dude's morals are all over the place. He's like, I don't want to have sex before marriage for some reason, but, you know, if you got to, if you got to, you know, give a few gobbies for lunch money, that's fine. Um, but the other day, my partner told me that they actually had sex with a guy for cash back then as well. All right, this came as a shock to me, especially since I thought they'd already told me everything. Now, now I don't know what to do because I feel this terrible feeling inside whenever I think about it, and sometimes it causes me physical pain. Part of it is putting my beliefs aside. Part of it is that putting my beliefs aside, they wouldn't be willing to have sex with me. Okay, so you've already identified this problem, but I wouldn't even be there first. That's tough. I feel like if you're waiting until marriage and they're waiting until marriage, but they have already had sex and you haven't, it feels 
it will it would feel a lot less special. I feel like it's very special if it's both of your firsts and both of you are waiting. But if it's just one, I feel like it's a bit strange, especially considering that you've kind of technically had sex and also seeing that she doesn't ever want to have sex and probably never will and has only ever done it for money. That's kind of like a red flag if that like, you, do you want that in your relationship where it's like, oh, fine, I'll have sex with you, but only if I get this or only if you do your chores. Like you don't want to live under that. And I'm sure she wouldn't be happy with someone who wants to have sex with her all the time for fun and because you love them. Seems like she would not enjoy that at all. Um, I love my partner and I know that logically this shouldn't ever, this shouldn't change anything, but I don't know if these feelings are going to go away with time or not. I don't really have anyone in my life that I feel comfortable talking about this with. I could use your advice, but understand if you don't want to touch this one or if you think I'm a piece of trash. I don't think you're a piece of trash. Uh, P.S. I once had a girl literally begging me to have sex with her, but I declined so I can su- safely say I'm not an incel. You're a vol cell, voluntarily celibate. Look, bro, I think that uh, the if you have a belief system, well, okay, there's kind of two parts. If you don't want to have sex until marriage, you need to know why you think that because if it's just some like backed up Christian religious shit that you don't even really believe in anymore, maybe you should just let go of that for your own sanity and you should talk to someone about that. The other part is if you truly do believe and you work out why you believe that sex before but marriage is not a good thing and not for you, I don't think you're compatible with someone who has done it for money because those two things are so diametrically opposed that I don't think you can reconcile them in your own, in your own brain. What a fucking sentence that was, huh? That was a good one. Uh, yeah, dude, I don't think this girl is for you because I feel like once, you, if you get married and you cross that threshold and your brain goes, all right, now I can fuck her. And she goes, oh no. Because look, if you think about it from her perspective, she's in the perfect relationship because you are not going to have sex with her. So when you change drastically and go from not wanting to have sex with her all to being like, oh man, I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. I want to do it all the time. Won't that just be terrible for her? I feel like this is doomed and it's not going to move past this. Those are my thoughts. Uh, What do you guys think? Write in the comments below. I think that this seems doomed to me and I think that you need to uh, work out why you think this and then if you still think it and you know why, great. And if you work out that you believe it for no reason, maybe drop it and that's also great. And then I just think that, I I don't know, uh, getting with a girl who would only ever have sex if she got something out of it and then outside of that she thinks that it's gross and bad, that's not going to be compatible with a guy who goes, oh my God, pussy's awesome, let's go. That's what I think, all right? And I'm going to end the podcast there. I'm going to continue on for Patreon supporters. If you want extra Spears Sundays, jump on patreon.com slash lose Spears. It's up right now. Uh, and this podcast went up on Thursday. So you guys get a bunch of bonus stuff, all right? Join the Discord. I'll see you there. And uh, you get early access to everything else that I do. And uh, lucespears.com for tickets. Gold Coast on Thursday, Brisbane on Friday and Saturday. Tickets are going quick now that people realize I'm actually going to do these shows. So get yours and I will see you there. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a shit one.